When working in a programming language, it's important for us to understand the structure of the code we write. An expression in programming is some meaningful combination of symbols. And for any given programming language, some sequences of symbols will be meaningful, and some will not be. For example, the symbol 1 is a meaningful expression in OCaml. 2 plus 3 is also a meaningful expression. But 4, 5 plus is not a meaningful expression in the language. This is what we mean when we talk about the syntax of a programming language. Syntax is all about what counts as a well-formed, well-structured expression in the language. To be formal about this, we can define some rules for what basic arithmetic expressions look like. We're going to write these rules in a standard notation known as bacchus naur form, or BNF. Let's start by writing a rule for how we form an expression. We're using the letters EXPR in these angled brackets to stand for the class of all valid arithmetic expressions. This double colon equals sign tells us how we form the expression class on the left. And on the right hand side, we might say number to indicate that any number is a valid arithmetic expression. But then we also need to define how we form a number. So we'll add an additional rule that says that a number could be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 and so on. The vertical bars here let us provide multiple different ways that you might form a number. So if you haven't seen this notation before, it might look strange, but all these two rules are saying is that any number, like 0 or 1 or 2, is a valid expression. But there's another way to form a valid expression too. We might have an expression like 3 plus 4, or we might even have a more complex expression, like 3 plus 4 times 5. More generally, any time we have two valid arithmetic expressions, we can construct a new arithmetic expression with one expression on the left, a binary operator, and then one expression on the right. To formalize that rule, we'll use a vertical bar to denote an alternate way of forming an expression. And in this case, an expression could be formed as another expression that we'll call expression left, a binary operator, abbreviated binop, and another expression that we'll call expression right. We'll also need to define binop and say that the symbols for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are all valid binary operators. These rules taken together define what we call a grammar for how to build arithmetic expressions. Using the rules in this grammar, we can build an infinite number of different arithmetic expressions. For example, let's take the expression 3 plus 4 times 5. It's an expression formed by a left expression, a binary operator, and a right expression. The left expression is just a number, and that number is 3. The binary operator is the plus symbol. The right expression is itself formed by a left expression, a binary operator, and a right expression. The left expression is a number, and that number is 4. The binary operator is the multiplication symbol, and the right expression is a number, and that number is 5. This syntax tree here is the underlying hierarchical structure of the expression that we write linearly as 3 plus 4 times 5. But one thing you might notice is that there's another structure that seems to also correspond to this same sequence of symbols. We could instead use this syntax tree where the left expression is the addition of 3 and 4, and the right expression is the number 5. The syntax we've defined is ambiguous. It allows for multiple different trees for the same expression. And these two syntax trees have different meanings, so it's important that we have a defined way to resolve the ambiguity. Programming languages deal with this in a number of ways. One way is via precedence with some operators taking precedence over others. In OCaml, the multiplication operator takes precedence over the addition operator. So the expression 3 plus 4 times 5 is interpreted as 3 on the left and 4 times 5 on the right. Programming languages also deal with ambiguity with associativity. 
In OCaml, for example, the subtraction operator is left associative. So in the expression 5 minus 3 minus 1, we would group the 5 minus 3 together as a subexpression rather than 3 minus 1. If you, the programmer, want to override the precedence or the associativity of the language, you can do so by use of parentheses so that you make clear what you want the structure of your expression to be. So 3 plus 4 times 5, with the 3 plus 4 in parentheses, will have 3 plus 4 as a subexpression. When writing code, we write the code as a linear sequence of symbols, but what ultimately matters is the hierarchical structure of the expressions we write. These underlying structures are what we call the abstract syntax of expressions. The concrete syntax, meanwhile, is the linear sequence of symbols we write. You'll find that there are multiple different concrete syntax expressions that correspond to the same abstract syntax. Adding extra parentheses around a sequence of symbols that are already expressions, for example, is different concrete syntax, the sequence of symbols is different, but the abstract syntax, the underlying structure that ultimately matters when evaluating the expression, that doesn't change. One important example of this in programming is commenting. Comments are part of the concrete syntax of a programming language that have no effect on an expression's abstract syntax. As a result, they're only there for people reading the code, but they're very useful for documenting our intentions when programming to human readers. In OCaml, we can add a comment by including the text of our comment inside of parentheses and asterisks. Including comments doesn't change how the program runs, but they're important in fulfilling a fundamental principle that in this course we refer to as the edict of intention, make your intentions clear. Commenting helps make our intentions clear to other programmers, or even to ourselves looking back at the code later. And there are other ways of making your intentions clear too, anything from choosing clear variable names to spacing and indentation. Often, we make our intentions clear in ways that don't affect the abstract syntax, don't change how the program runs, but do help someone reading our code understand what we intend.